Hello, Julia. Thank you so much for coming to have a conversation with me today. Um, so my understanding is you, you've um, been one of these people who, who've been struggling with long COVID for the last little while. Um, can you tell me about how that started? What were you doing at the time? What symptoms you've experienced when when that when it first started when you you had COVID? Sure. So um, so I got COVID March twenty twenty. Um, I was working in A and E at the time because I'm a doctor training to be a GP. Um, and uh, I got it after seeing a patient with COVID uh, who was quite unwell with it. Um, and my symptoms were that I had pretty much a solid fever for 45 days um, during which time you know it, it just didn't didn't come down I wasn't unwell enough to go into hospital but I was pretty unwell um, and I, I just just rested I, I wasn't really well enough to do much managed to go outside a little bit but but that was it um, So, <clears throat> so there you were in the midst of the start of the pandemic, doctor in A and E, um, with these symptoms. So, what happened after that? So, did you try and go back to work? Um, yeah. So, um, it was quite difficult because obviously no one knew anything about COVID at the time. No, you're right. I was going to my GP, and I was thinking you know, I don't know why I've got this fever. And then we discussed having some antibiotics, make sure it wasn't a chest infection, but it wasn't. But and my GP was very good, you know, opening with the uncertainty, had some bloods, chest x-ray, all fine. Um, so it, it was a very uncertain time because I had this illness that I was told, you know, I'd be fine from. I didn't have any medical problems before. Um, and, you know, PPE wasn't great we you know initially started that we had the full gown and we had the the visor and the, F, and the FFP3 mask uh, and then they stepped it down to just um, surgical mask and apron and, and at that point my consultant said well this means they probably think that we're all going to get it um, but you know I thought so I thought oh it's not going to be so bad but I'm young I'm healthy it'll probably be fine um, but it was very stressful at the time um, because the department kept having to change shape um, for to allow the COVID zones and the non-COVID zones. There's new information coming out pretty much daily on or weekly on how to treat COVID, what to do, what to see. Um, and I, I didn't really much like working in A&E either. So because of a previous job in A&E, I'd found very stressful. And, and then to come into this new job that I was bit apprehensive about um mm, and mm. then with it all changing constantly mm. uh, 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 and to get it um yeah so it was a very uncertain uh, mm. and quite scary time mm. so uncertainty a lot of stress working in that environment lots of change then you got covid and then the symptoms seemed to linger on and then what so you said you had a fever for 45 days so what happened after that so after that, um, I just I just felt like I had no energy. Um, I found it hard to do anything, um, and quite often found that if I did something, then I'd be very tired and feel unwell afterwards. Mm. Um, so better than how I was with the fever, but I was still spiking, and actually, I I still had occasional temperatures up to thirteen months later, mm. um, with, with the ongoing process. So. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, going on from that, um, feelings of fatigue and uh, not being able to stand up for very long and, yeah, feeling a real effect if I overexerted myself um, and brain fog, um, all, all of those things, yeah. So when you say all of those things, what other sort of symptoms were you experiencing at the time? Yeah, so I, I think I think the main ones were fatigue and brain fog and um, just feeling unwell if I if I did too much. Those were my main ones. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, probably the most disabling ones. I think I I did have random other oh yeah, I sometimes feel my heart racing, sometimes feel out of breath. Um obviously the fevers as well, we're still having. Um and just just not 
not right. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, very difficult to understand what was happening because again, you know, COVID was new um, and my GP though, she was very supportive, didn't really have any answers. Mm -hmm. So from there, did you have further investigations? Um, did Were there any other medical diagnosis or labels that were given to you? So, um, so I had some heart investigations, I had an ECG and I had an echo, which were normal. Um, and, you know, that sort of went back to the GP, said it was all fine. And then I was part of a Facebook group uh, for UK doctors with long COVID. And they were talking about how lots of people had um, postural tachycardia syndrome, POTS. Um, so after a while, I thought that would probably be worth testing myself for. So obviously I have the blood pressure in the um, heart rate um, monitor. So I did a, um, a line to standing test at home um, and I submitted the measurements, you know, at zero minutes, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. I sent those to my GP who diagnosed me with POTS um, and she wrote to a cardiologist who agreed to start me on Evabradine um, while awaiting um, referral to the um, neurology clinic at St. Mary's in, in London. Brilliant. So Evabradine is a drug that just can slow down the heart rate. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when you started taking Evabradine, did it make a difference? Your yeah, it did actually. Yeah, it did. It made me feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, I think... Um, yeah, just ha having something to, to help slow down the heart rate, it did help with my fatigue levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so before you got a sort of POTS diagnosis and started on Evabradine, um, what was your functionality like? Were you working? And um, what was your life? What did it look like? Mm. So no, I wasn't working. I wasn't well enough to. I thought when my fever stopped that I would be back at work, but I realised that if I couldn't even walk up the drive, <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. Um, and it was also um, me and my now husband were supposed to be getting married in, in the end of May, um, which was cancelled because of COVID. Um, so day to day, um, I couldn't really drive. Um, we did get married as soon as it was allowed, um, which was the best day that I'd had in a period of probably a year. Uh, I, you know, at all, I just had my, on my wedding day, I was so, so much better. Not, not well, but I, I did, um, I was able to walk down the aisle, which I was worried about. And I had a nap in the day, but it was only, you know, 30 people then anyway, and no, not really, well, a small reception. Um, so yeah, it, I was quite restricted. I think um, if you think about, about, when you're well, you've got lots of possibilities, but you know, when you're unwell, your, your window of, of your life just becomes very, very small um, as to what, what I could do at, at that time. So I had, um, had a wheelchair um, and got a blue badge and at, you know, for a period of a year, um, a year and a few months after getting COVID, I couldn't walk more than 200 meters um and yeah li life was very different mm, it sounds like it mm. and so what happened next mm. so um so there was an improvement on evabradine mm. but it was limited um i started doing a little bit of swimming very like gradual you know the first time i just floated in the pool the uh, second time I maybe swam like half a length or something. A um, little bit of an improvement. Uh, started going to Pilates, you know, with you. A little bit of an improvement. Um, and a little bit of an improvement from doing like meditation. So I've got a Christian meditation app that, that was helpful. So all these things had little bits of improvement. So I could see small, small changes. Um, but then I, I did a program called Dynamic Neural Retraining System, which is called DNRS. Um, so I can talk a bit, a bit about that. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, so it's the sort of program that I would have been very sceptical about before I got long COVID. Um, so the, the premise is that in certain conditions, there is a, um, a chronic 
stress response that sends your um, limbic system, which is regulating your emotions and stress and fear and all those things, um, into disarray. Um, and that the premise of the program is that due to neuroplasticity and the brain being able to change, um, that you can address some of this and, and you can sort of switch your brain from a state of fight or flight, chronic stress response into a state of uh, growth and repair. Um, so for, I, I know there are other programs like it, so I believe there are lots of similarities with SERPA, which you do, and yep. um, with the lightning process and yep. there's a Dr. Gupta. So I think, I think there are similar things, but this is the one I did. Um, and it starts with doing a four day webinar course. Um, and I remember my mum coming to see me at the end of doing the four days and she said, oh, you look different. Um, so, you know, even at a short um, period of time, um, there'd been an improvement. Um, and the programme asks you to commit to doing an hour of day of kind of practices. Um, and, you know, after doing that four day, and I, I still do an hour a day because I'm not quite fully recovered, um, just phenomenal um, changes over time, committing myself to aligning with the program and um, spending the time to uh, dig into it. Um, I think you have to commit to it to see the benefits. Um, if, if, you think it's, if you think it's not going to work and you don't put the time in, then it probably isn't. Um, but for me, I saw uh, one of my friends who also had long COVID, she did it and afterwards was climbing mountains and I thought, well, that, that sounds pretty good um so I, yeah so so you mentioned certain practices that you were doing mm. for an hour a day can you give an example of some of these practices yeah so um yeah for dnrs you they ask you to do four rounds and so you kind of speak to your limbic system and, and tell it everything's okay um the kind of say messages of safety yeah it's okay yeah. your body's fine yeah and and you and there's a, um, uh, a pronouncement that you speak over to yourself. So for my, me, my the thing I say is I am healthy and strong. Um, and then you spend five for each round, which is about fifteen minutes. You spend five to seven minutes in a really good memory, um, like really positive, really happy. And then you imagine the um, the energy or whatever it is from from that memory going around your body and healing you. And then you step forward in that uh, and then you visualize something that you currently can't do but would love to do and then all your the five senses fully immerse yourself in in that visualization uh, imagine yourself doing it and then uh, again you imagine the energy from that flowing through around your body um, and, and i remember even after you know now even if i have some some symptoms or something if i do around then quite often i'll feel better afterwards but especially at the beginning, you know, I would do half an hour rounds and I might be quite foggy before, you know, brain fog. And actually afterwards, I, I'd be pretty lucid. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that sounds brilliant. I mean, that, that they are the sort of techniques that I, I would teach if somebody does the SERPA work with me. Uh, maybe not quite as regimented as that, but the principles apply. Now, I seem to remember you went to Africa and you hmm. spent some of your visualizations about Africa. Tell me about um, your visualizations doing this program and your experience going to Africa and what you did yeah so um yeah to, I mean to look back and think about when I was unwell going to a country like Kenya and being well would have been impossible you know the heat and everything would have been a massive trigger but um yeah I visualized going to Kenya and seeing my friends and seeing everything that she was doing um um, we spent a, a week in uh, Zanzibar afterwards and we went paddle boarding and so I was visualizing um, you know standing up on the paddle board feeling trying to get my balance I had the um, the paddle and visualizing going through the the mangroves um, in the heat and and particularly just feeling really well mm -hmm. and feeling healthy and strong um, doing those things um, so I enjoyed it lots of times before I even got there um, but then once I was doing it and, 
you know, I was, I was actually there. It just felt incredible because I felt like I'd, I'd been working towards it through my visualizations and then I was achieving it, um, which, I, which I was. And actually I felt really good, you know, paddle boarding in, in the hot country, which was, yeah, fantastic. Amazing. Mm. Um, in terms of functionality now, where would you say you're at currently? Yeah, so um, I'm a lot better than I was. I'm not fully better, and I, 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 I you know, I'm going to get a lot better. Um, I'm not there yet, so I'm back at work. Um, so I had a prolonged return to uh, work from March until August. You know, very fa gradual phased return. And then from August, I officially restarted work and I'm back in training. Um, so I work at 60%. Um, and I have a, um, my current job is very in hours. So I'm not doing shifts or anything yet. Um, but, you know, I, able to do that alongside the training requirements of doing a portfolio and teaching. And, and I've done a bit of teaching for medical students um, in swimming. Um, I've made it up to 40 lengths now a few times I'm gonna I want to get to 50 um, and me and my husband went to the Lake District uh, this weekend and we borrowed um, our in-laws camper van um, and you know we were walking 10,000 uh, steps every day and we did that for three days um, and I, I, I felt really good um, so I've I've come such a long way um, but that there are still some things that I, I would like to do. Um, and I would, I would, yeah. And I feel that I'm going to get there because my rate of recovery hasn't plateaued. Yeah, mm. it, it, it's still getting there. Mm. And I think, the, you know, um, the more I'm enjoying doing these active things, actually, the, the more that I'm recovering, uh, which is really nice. I kind of say that we're all on this healing journey, so we're never quite where we'd like to be. Um, but it's just amazing to hear how far you've come. <clears throat> how long were you off work for altogether? Uh, it would have been, uh, yeah, two years, because I two started years. my phased return um, two, two years after I went off sick. Um, so I was still doing my phased returns. So it would be, I guess, two years and a few months from when I officially restarted. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and when you think about long COVID, what do you feel has con contributed to your symptoms? Do you have any thoughts on that? As in to getting it in the first place? <laughs> yeah, period? why do you think you, you got long COVID? Mm. Um, so I think, you know, it was a very stressful situation i was in massively um, so yeah yeah uh with work the covid situation planning a wedding um not enjoying a &E, um mm. you know very stressful um and um yeah not not in my comfort zone at all uh, and i think sometimes you don't realize how stressful a situation is until until you're out of it um and I think also there's a degree to which um, kind of the way the way that you work or um, the the way that you are can set you up sometimes for these sorts of problems. So um, I've read a, a little bit about um, the three circles of well-being. Um, so there's this idea that there are, are three systems that you can sit in. Um, one is the um, thrive system so that's being productive getting tasks done um doing things uh, you have the soothe system which is where you give yourself time to relax um, and enjoy and, and spend time and there's a um, threat system so when you're on high alert um, and you're feeling stressed and anxious um, and i think it, it can be quite easy to recognize when you know you're in that threat system but i think reading about it there's a danger to if you're always in threat or the thrive um and you don't give your body time to relax you don't perhaps spend so much time in the soothe system um which is like the parasympathetic system rest and digest um if you're always on high alert whether it's stressful or, or achieving um 
then then your your body isn't going to be the healthiest it can be um, and any extra threat onto it so extra stress from a situation is more likely to tip you into place of um, towards illness rather than towards health um, and I think I have read that long COVID does seem to be in, more in type A personalities um, which is sitting in that that thrive and overachieving um, which I can I can identify with definitely. So, so when we talk about type A personality what are the sort of, sort of how would you describe that? Mm. Um, so uh, I think of it as like overachieving and um, often often it's quite assertive uh, which, which isn't me but but that's the classic type A um, yeah wanting to get stuff done and um, being being a leader sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But we talk about some of the personality traits that are driven, analytical, um, often need to be in control, um, a sort of helper, uh, overly responsible, that they're often the traits that we talk about or that I've seen, particularly in people who have long COVID um, and other sort of mind body <clears throat> health conditions. So it's really, really common this. Um, so when I give people this sort of list, they they I show, showed a number of people long COVID this list, and they're like, "That's me." Mm -hmm. It just it's them on a piece of paper, um, and this is quite consistent. Mm -hmm. um, but the question is, where have these personality traits come from? Mm -hmm. And they're often programmed patterns from our childhood, and they become a that they become a a um, that they're a protective response from childhood, which carries through into our adult life that add extra stress and pressure on ourselves. perfectionists that's a an, another common trait yes. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I find it difficult now that I'm going back into work to not slip back into all of those things because mm -hmm. it, it's much easier when you're unwell and you've got lots of time um not to worry about being perfectionist or getting everything done because because you can't you know it, you, I certainly couldn't um but it's been interesting you know getting better and being able to do more it's it's quite hard not to slip back into oh and you know need to get everything done perfectly and, and everything it's, um, yeah. and, and how how do you do that because if it's sort of this inbuilt perfectionist thing mm. um, how would you not be perfectionist do mm. you have you thought about that yeah i think um i think for some things they just have to be good enough mm -hmm. um you know if if i find myself getting stressed about something i can more easily identify when i'm stressed now because some in some ways i tend to feel it in my body if i'm stressed mm -hmm. whereas before i i don't think i was as aware mm, absolutely so I feel that i'm getting stressed maybe my shoulders are a bit knotted or you know I'm yeah. a bit symptomatic i'll think okay you know why why do i feel like that what what's mm. going on um and then if I can work out that it's because, um, oh, the house isn't tidy or, or I haven't done the laundry, then I'd be like, well, actually, this is okay, <laughs> you know. Um, and also, even when you just get home and you go straight into doing jobs, um, actually, they don't really need to get done straight away. Just taking the time to have a cup of tea and forcing myself to rest. Um, I think when I was unwell, I didn't really have a choice. I had to rest. Um, whereas now, um, yeah, I, I, I choose to to do it. But it is it is difficult and it has to be a very conscious thing. I'm not sure I know how to wire it out. <laughs> so have there been certain things that you found unhelpful or mm. things that you have cho chosen not to get involved with? Mm. yeah so um i think support groups can be a really interesting issue um so when i first got covid obviously the support group was part of the reason that i found out about pots and got treatments and everything for it and it was quite supportive at a time when nobody really knew what was happening um flip side of it was that so much of it is illness focused rather than health focused um, and I think I just found so much of my time thinking about how unwell I was mm -hmm. um, and thinking about what I could do, what I might not be able to do, what would happen if I overdid things. 
that it was just all of my brain space was filled up with my illness and and being part of some social media group facebook groups that were talking about that just just made it worse um and actually when i stopped looking at, at some of those i actually felt so much better um that i wasn't always thinking about illness um because i think that's not nice even if you are well always thinking about those things and what it does it reinforces neural pathways when you're constantly looking constantly reading you it's reinforcing i'm sick yeah. and that reinforces the neural pathway so the um the what you've done is all about changing those neural pathways re-diverting them dampening them down yeah um, so i can see it's part of that process and and most certainly for myself i i found exactly that i had to remove myself from um social media in terms of the support group because i realized the, this is not helping me yeah and and i i think also what what you're filling your your brain with if you're if you're watching or if you're reading things that are very negative um or you know reading those sorts of stories but also on the flip side um i found if i was watching youtube clips that could be really positive then that that made a big difference even you know like athletes winning races i think that you know that that joy and that celebration you can you can actually just be have a bit of that just from watching it and being part of it so i think it it goes both ways you you partake in what what you're what you're reading and what you're seeing um so what what you choose to put into your brain um does does have a massive effect absolutely um, and if you if you could give people who are still in that place of struggling with these symptoms some sort of key bits of advice, could you summarise what that would be? Mm. Oh, that's a big one. Um, uh, I think um, have have an open mind um, to to alternative things and and stuff to do with the mind body perspective. I know that. Um, when I first found out about POTS, I was very disparaging of it, you know, coming from a medical background and thinking um, everything had to have a purely biological um, explanation. And I, I, I now I just don't think it's that simple. Um, I think although there are probably um, immunological mechanisms, inflammatory mechanisms, um, neurological mechanisms I think that's probably microclots I think that's probably it could all, all well be true but mm -hmm. I don't think that it's, that's the only um, way of recovering from healing from um, that way I think um, I know something you've said before Lorna is you know if you think of it as the mind and, and the brain as being the control center of the of the body um, then surely if we can get our our brains um, in in the right gear, then uh, maybe I'm misquoting you, but the rest of the body will will follow in a way. No, that sounds great. Is there anything else you feel that is important to share? I think just um, you know hope. I think I always felt that I I would get better one day, um, and I think you know part part of it, I did have some improvement just from time. Mm -hmm. um, so even even if you know people don't want to engage with the other stuff, I think that time with time, you know, there is there is hope for people to improve. Um, but especially just in, engaging with things that you you might not otherwise engage with. Just want to say thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, I haven't heard this whole story before, so it's great for me to um, to to just I, I've known Julia for quite a long time now because you, you do my Pilates class with me mm -hmm. this is a class for people with POTS and long COVID and these health conditions and I sort of drip feed the mind body stuff into these classes um, so it's just great to hear how you've come on your journey and, and where you are at now and it's just so exciting to see mm -hmm. um, so just want to say thank you so much for um, talking to me today Oh, you're so welcome. It's nice to be able to say it all in one, one story. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome.